I think as parents, we can all agree that we probably spend an exorbitant amount of time thinking, worrying, stressing about all the things that we need to teach our kids before they move out of our house. I gotta be honest with you, as a mom of eight kids, it's something I think about a lot. You know, the idea that my 35-year-old would be living in my basement for an unforeseeable amount of time seems like, all right, fine, if I had one child. But when you have eight children, I can't have eight children living in my basement for the next 40 years because I didn't prepare them well for life in the real world. And so, at least for me, I am always trying to strike a balance between giving my kids a childhood that is in some ways insulated from the harsh realities of the real world. I want them to be able to enjoy the free state that is being a child. Those years are so fleeting, so fast, and you will never get back that kind of innocence, freedom that is found in no responsibilities as a child. But I also want to balance that with making sure that my kids have good, strong character, uh, good, solid values, that they are capable of taking care of themselves when they move out of my house, that they're not the kind of kids who are going to go to college or go out into the real world and have no idea how to do anything. We've all either known someone like that or in some ways been that person ourselves. Maybe there were some things that were like, dang, I wish someone would have taught me that. And this is evident, by the way, in the memes that circulate amongst us millennial-aged parents. The memes that circulate about like, why did I have to learn pre-calculus? Couldn't you have taught me taxes? Those kinds of things are, they're funny because they're true. Because a lot of us felt like, okay, certain things we did in school, they didn't prepare us for the real world. Um, they didn't prepare us for what is commonly called hashtag adulting. So today we're gonna talk about uh, what I deem the one thing that you must teach your children before they leave your home, before they move out. Whether you, by the way, are a homeschool parent, whether your kids go to public school, private school, doesn't matter. The whole truth is that the one thing is not like one thing thing in itself. It's one category of things. Dun, dun, dun. Life skills. What do I mean by life skills? Let's go through them. And if I have any resources for teaching those life skills or you know applicable things that might help you, we'll discuss that and I will of course link them down below in the description box as well. All right, the first category, you might be like, Angie, come on, they know this, hear me out. Personal hygiene and health. Sometimes we think, again, we think that our children are going to intuit things, like that like through osmosis, they're going to just understand that this is the thing or this is the way. A lot of times we forget how many things in our everyday life are just like autopilot. We go on autopilot so we don't even think about teaching it to someone else or talking to them about it because it's just an autopilot thing. It's just something that we do without a lot of thought. So again, obviously this seems, I, just follow me, okay? I don't wanna leave this category out. Obviously you wanna teach your kids good dental hygiene, personal hygiene, cleaning things. So just making sure that we're giving our kids all the answers to those things. And as I always say, like making sure that the conversation is never awkward, that you are an open book to talk about any of those things so that your kids will come to you and ask you when they have questions about those things, especially if there's ever like an issue and then they feel kind of embarrassed and shy and they don't know who to turn to. And I think we can all agree, we really don't want them turning to Google to try to figure out what to do about a skin problem or something like that. You know, we want to, to help them resolve these problems, but building those open lines of communication is gonna be required first before they'll even come to you with that kind of stuff. Personal grooming, personal hygiene stuff, and then health related things. Obviously through life, they're going to experience cuts and scrapes and bruises and things. So naturally, perhaps uh, sort of the general basics of first aid will kind of be taught there. But again, depending on how you use medications in your house, how often you use them, what you use them for, that kind of thing. I think it's important that as they're you know moving out into adulthood, that they understand things like the difference between ibuprofen and acetaminophen medications. Uh, the reasons that you don't mix those things, just so they can understand when they go to the pharmacy and they pick up some headache medicine or something like that, that they understand why they're there are times that you should take these things, the, the spacing between them. These are just things that I know are gonna seem like duh things, but maybe things you just haven't thought of. I could honestly make separate videos for each of these categories that we're gonna talk about because there's so much to go into as far as like what your kids need to know about each of them. That could be kind of a fun series. Ooh, that's a good idea. I should write that down. Hold on. 
Let me know down below in the comments if you guys think that could be a fun series where we deep dive each of the categories and we'll go into more and more detail about what to teach kids. Like even from that stuff, we I didn't even touch on like health insurance, how to understand deductibles, how that works. All of these things are important. But with that said, let's get into the second category, which arguably may be one of the most important, if not the most important. I don't even know how much weight to give all these things exactly, but that is money, budgeting, saving, expenses, how all of that works, writing a check. Money is one of those things that, that is one of those meme things that you see constantly is people feeling like they were ill-prepared to deal with money, not just on the budgeting aspect, but to understand it, understanding interest rates and mortgages, especially student loans. When you go to college and you're just like, oh, okay, fine, sign here, sign here, take out these massive student loans. They need to be aware of what they're doing, what it's going to cost them in the future, what the average pay of that job that they're going, you know, hoping to get may be, how long will it take them to pay that off. Just so many financial conversations. And that brings us to today's video sponsor that I am thrilled to tell you all about. Today's video is sponsored by GoHenry. GoHenry basically is a debit card, but also a financial learning app. This is fantastic for teaching your kids money management skills from a younger age. Basically, it's for kids ages like six to 18. We're using it right now with our oldest two who are 13 and 15, but after using it with them and seeing the benefits, I'm also planning on using it with my 10 year old and eight year old. Obviously, this is a debit card, so your children can use this to pay for things when they are out and about and going places, all of that. But the area that I think GoHenry has really gotten it right that is so useful and practical is within the app, there is a learning center. It's basically a way for your kids to learn about good money management skills. Um, you can assign your kids these money missions if you've got younger ones that kind of need that like fun and excitement to get interested in something. And uh, it's a really cool way for them to learn a lot of really good financial principles about managing money and savings and charity and all of that within this app. And it basically has them like take quizzes, they watch videos, they earn points for things within the app. But for us, what I really love about it for my older two is that they're starting to, you know, go out and do their thing sometimes. And, you know, for example, one of their favorite things to do is to take uh, their dogs and my daughter's pet pig and they go walk around downtown. We live in like a small town. We have this little downtown area. There's restaurants and like an alley and, you know, all kinds of like little fun things to do, little shops you can go in and stuff. And they love to get dropped off down there and just walk around, hang out, go get a soda or an ice cream and walk around. Apparently the pig is the talk of the town. People stop and take pictures of my daughter's pig. They love it. They have so much fun. And I love that they have their own little debit card that they can pay for things, but not just, you're not just giving them like an account and being like, go off, have fun, see how it goes. Especially if you're starting with them as younger kids, you are able to control spending limits, control ATM withdrawal limits, all from the app. Uh, the other thing that I love is that you can invite relatives and family members to be able to put money onto their card through the app. So for example, my girls do some things for my folks every week and they get paid for it those things every week. So instead of my dad bringing cash over to them, he can just send them the money through the app and get their payment that way. You set up allowances on recurring basis, uh, but you don't just have to like give them the money. You can assign tasks within there that they have to do to earn the money. It's really fantastic. There's lots of ways that you can use it, whether you wanna be super, super hands-on with everything, or you wanna step back a little bit as they get older and really like release the control to them. But it allows you to stay in close proximity to what's going on. Where are they spending their money? You could say you can use it in stores, you can use it on ATM, but you can't use it online. Um, or you can give them access to use it in all three places. Like I said, there's a lot of parental um, control there that you can restrict, ease up, however you wanna do things depending on the age of your child and sort of their uh, financial literacy. It's really never too early to start at least introducing those topics. As someone who was really terrible with money for a really long time, um, after graduating high school and into my marriage and the beginning of our marriage, like we were not good with money and it hurt us. It really hurt us for a long time and it took so much extra to dig out of that. And I really am hoping for my kids that they can bypass that, that they can just go right into being good with their money. We want our kids to learn from our mistakes, right? We don't want them to make them too. We just want them to learn from ours and not make them. 
And of course, I do have a discount for you guys. If you want to try GoHenry, uh, you can use my code Angela and that will get you a $25 credit uh, and your first month free. So all that information will be down below in the description box. Be sure to check it out. Financial savings, this whole category, we could go even further into all the different things I think kids need to learn, but this is definitely like the second pillar. All right, the third thing that I think is so important to teach kids, in fact, I was just having one of these conversations with one of my children today, and that is, is well, sort of the overall broad umbrella of handling their own emotions. For me, again, this could be a totally separate video, but what I would pick out of that category as like one of the most important things, basically that the only thing that you can control is yourself. You cannot control what other people say and do. The only thing you can control is yourself, how you respond to people, things that they say. Words have the power that you give them. I really want all of my kids to not just really know that, but take control of their life in the sense that they recognize that, you know what, I'm gonna take ownership of the decisions that I can make and I'm gonna let go of the things that I cannot control. I know that it can be a huge detriment for their lives if they are gonna go through life every single day feeling like they can control other people or trying to control other people to get the reaction that they want or the response that they want or this thing that they want and you just cannot, and it will be beating your head against the wall for years and years and years until you finally learn that lesson the hard way. You're going to struggle emotionally a lot in life if you are constantly trying to control the reactions and responses of people around you, which of course you cannot, and it will be this hamster wheel of frustration. So I just want my kids to take ownership for themselves, um, but also be able to let go of things that they simply cannot control and how do they work around it, right? How do they continue to achieve and do the things they want to do, perhaps within a, a framework of something that they don't like. That brings us to the next little pillar section, which I would kind of call like problem solving, decision making, critical thinking. Uh, again, we could totally deep dive on this, but I want my children to be able to think through something logically. How can they solve this problem? How can they fix this situation if it's fixable? If it's not fixable, how can I work within it, around it, over it, under it? You know, really be able to look at something sort of pragmatically and to pull the emotion out of certain situations to just be able to address them and deal with them. Uh, because again, this is stuff that they're gonna encounter whether it's in college or in the first job or within you know marriage relationships, that's a whole other category, but just the simple fact of being able to think about something critically to uh, sort of pull the emotions back from it. I know this is something that again, I'm not always great at and have struggled with for a long time, but as I've gotten older and it sort of happened naturally, I feel like life kind of forces you into that understanding. I would rather my children learn it early and be able to utilize those skills rather than have to wait for life to slap you across the face a few times and, and get you to go like, nope, okay, fine. This is how I have to think about this or this is how I need to deal with this situation. And part of that, of course, is consequences, uh, sort of the natural consequences, if you will, for your decisions. That's a, a big part of parenting, I think, is that we always wanna insulate our kids, right? We don't want them to ever feel any pain or sadness uh, it's hard for us as parents to see our kids struggle or suffer in some way, but understanding that life is full of natural consequences and there are consequences for your decisions. So at an age appropriate, sort of slow trickle, letting our kids experience some of those to a degree that they can understand that, yep, okay, if I do A, then B happens. Um, so that they will understand the concept of these natural life consequences the older they get and the more serious the consequences become for these decisions that they make. And then being able to accept them should, you know, you choose A and B happens or you choose B and C happens, uh, being able to really understand the consequences for the decisions that we make so that they can make the best decisions for them. My husband and I always say like, we're big believers in taking like leaps of faith and in sort of jumping off the cliff into this idea or dream or thing that we have. But we always say that we always make calculated decisions. We take calculated risks. So while we do believe in risk taking and we want to teach our kids to risk take a lot in their life, 
We also want them to make those decisions um, with some basis for understanding the outcomes and just a very calculated risk. Uh, because those tend to be the ones that work out the best are the ones that you're fully aware of, you know, how you got here, how do you do this, and what the options are, and having, you know, perhaps not just your plan A, but your plan B, and maybe even a plan C. Again, I'm a big believer in risk taking, but I just want my kids to be able to sort of suss out all the possibilities and make the best decisions with the information that they have. And then, of course, there's some very practical life skills that kids need to learn. Again, we could go even deeper into each of these. But it's shocking to me, this is always shocking to me, <laughs> that there's kids who go to college that don't know how to do their own laundry. I don't understand that. I don't understand that, but okay. I guess that I, I guess that can happen. I'm not sure how it does, but it does. So making sure that our kids understand the basics of a functioning household, the basics of laundry and dishes and how these things, you know, power, electricity, water, how these things come into the house, how they leave the house, how you pay for them, um, but how you also do them within the home. Like I said, taking care of your laundry, right? Perhaps they don't know that there's certain fabrics that can't go in the dryer or that if they do, your shirt's going to come out fitting a Barbie doll. They need to know these things and they won't know them by osmosis. Home maintenance, this could be a whole category, teaching your kids about like the circuit breaker in the house and like how to shut off all the electricity, what to do if the breaker tips, if the power goes out, if you need to just turn off the power to one room, one area. These are things that it's surprising that you think that perhaps your kids picked up on, or maybe it's something that you go, you know, I don't really remember where or how I learned that, I just learned it. That may happen for your kids, but it may not also. For most of us, when we grew up, we didn't have the, the social media, the computers, that kind of thing. We did spend more time in our homes, like watching our parents do things, uh, kind of learning th from them by observation. Now kids are in the car and they're looking at their phones. So they're not watching how their parents drive. What do they do? Oh, they move the stick shift like that. Okay, they put it in drive and then gas pedal brake. You'd think that these things would be things we just observe and then do, like monkey see, monkey do. But monkey doesn't see because monkey's on phone. So sometimes we have to teach monkey. Oh boy, this is, this is a big one too. Okay, it's a big one. The car care category. This is the one that <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I really struggled with after I moved out. And it would pain my father to know that because I think he, as a car lover and an enthusiast, a former mechanic, he's worked on cars. He loves cars, he works on them, changes his own oil, does all these things. I think he thought that I was perhaps picking up on things by watching. I was not. I was, I don't know what I was watching, butterflies, I don't know, but I wasn't watching what he was doing. Oh my gosh, I still remember the first time that my van, I had two children or one child. I had at least one child, maybe two, but I called my dad, I was like, the little boat, the little boat that's like in the water, you know, the little boat, it's mad, it's in the red, it's angry, what's wrong? And he's like, pull over, your car is overheating. Um, I had no idea, I didn't know what the little boat was. <laughs> Making sure your kids understand, look, it'd be fantastic if we can teach our kids, all of them, boys, girls, I don't care, how to change their own oil, should they need to, um, and how to change a tire. That's a big one, how to change a tire. You don't likely have to change your own oil if you really don't want to, and in some cars, it's practically impossible to do it yourself. But changing a tire, big necessity. Especially our daughters, I'm a big believer in teaching my daughters these things because what I don't want is if someone pulls over to offer to help them, I want them to be able to use their intuition to say, creeper, 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 no thanks, I don't need your help, I got it, thank you, where they could stand there very confidently and tell someone to keep on walking. Uh, and not have to require the help of someone that could potentially be a creeper, where they can't use their intuition to say, yeah, this person, I feel like I'm, I'm okay to let this person help me. Um, that's a whole nother video, a whole nother series we can talk about intuition and things. But car care skills, big things, lots of little categories within that. But as someone who didn't have any of those skills and had to learn them the hard way, I am just highly recommending and am working on myself ensuring that my kids get all of that information before they move out. That brings us to the end. I know that was a lot, especially since I said that it was like one thing, but it's the one thing is the category of life skills. We worry so much about our kids learning everything they need to learn in high school, and especially if you're a homeschool family. My gosh, you're stressing all the time about, do they know everything they need to know? It's great when kids understand, you know, calculus, uh, trigonometry, uh, you know, the scientific method. We want them to understand good literature, how to write an essay. I get it, okay? I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. But 
writing an essay is not going to help you when you're stranded on the side of the road. So you can't write an essay to get out of it. I think a lot of times, maybe your kid is doing like all of these AP classes and they've got their sports, right? They're so busy working on making this college transcript look so great so they can get into Harvard and da da da. And then they get there and they can't make top ramen, they can't do their laundry, they don't know what to do. And it's like, they're so excellent in this one category and yet, honestly like failures in this other that makes it very hard to live life and to do well. A good essay isn't going to fix a flat tire and the scientific method is not going to help you much when you need to keep to a tight budget because you're a poor college student and you have no money. So again let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see like a little bit of a deeper dive on each of these sections or at least some of them which ones you'd want to see and if you have anything else that you would add to this list again it's kind of a cursory list it's a it's a living document in my mind if you will i'm adding things to it constantly but if you have anything that you're like oh wait don't forget this i didn't know this thing and it was terrible i had to learn it the hard way let me know if you have anything like that uh, let us know down below in the comments so that we can all learn from each other, and then pass that information on to our children. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. That's it for me today. I hope you all are having a fantastic day, and I will see you again very soon.